Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. So we are just wrapping up the weekend at the Areni Festival in Armenia, the Areni Harvest Festival. And we're here with actually one of our favorite small producers. And it's called Old Bridge. And I'm going to tell you a little bit story about this, about this specific winery. The first time when we were here researching uh, material for our book, and Corking the Caucasus, we really liked this guy's wine. But we, his name is Armin, and we really liked him. So we thought that we might have been a little bit biased. That's why we liked him so much. So when we went to a taste Armenia wine tasting at Washington, D.C., at the Smithsonian Institute, we were scared to try his wines again amongst all the Armenian wines because we thought we were clouded. But you know what? We like his one of his wines were one of our favorite wines of the whole tasting, and that's what's so charming about this guy. He only makes very small batches of wine. He doesn't make wine every year. He makes reserve wines in the best years. He made wine in 2002, 2005, 2007, 2009, and 2012, which we tasted all of them. Less than 10,000 bottles each vintage. Very special guy. I just want to show you this right here. The cool thing, uh, this is kind of funny. We have his little poster right here. We have the banner only because... He had a booth at the Arendi Wine Festival yesterday, so we had access to it. So that's why that's in the frame. Now, interesting thing. I, we talk about the book. Armenia's modern wine industry, of course, they have a long history of winemaking, didn't really start taking off again until 2010. But Armin has been making wine since the early 2000s. So he's kind of the first guy in the modern Ar Armenian wine renaissance. Let me show you this bottle. This is the 2012 Old Bridge. This is a brand new label. Another cool thing, he named it after a bridge, which is in this picture right here. It's just actually around the corner here. It's a bridge that travelers on the Silk Road used to use when coming through here. There's even inscriptions in different languages. He took us down there, it's awesome. We are really big fans of the 2009 and the 2012 vintages. Both very different. The bottles also show a little bottle variation between bottles. I'm going to taste a little bit of the 12, talk to you about it. Shireen really likes the 9. You want to talk a little bit, Shireen, about what you like about the 2009 so much? Well, I mean, 2009 is really 7 years old, and you can smell the, the tertiary aroma <clears throat> and the aging on, on the nose. Um, I like that cotton candy nose, but at the same time, it's still really fruity, fruit forward on the palate. Yeah. So I really appreciate it, and I'm, I'm not the kind of person who really always chase for, for aged wine. Mm -hmm. But for this wine, I can say that, you know, it will still age beautifully for a couple of years, but absolutely ready to drain now a very, very complete wine. Yeah, I think it's complete wine. It's, it's, so, it's shockingly good for how small production, uh, how inexpensive this is. 09 to me is a little bit dirtier. 12 is a little bit brighter with a little more fruit. All his wines he only makes out of one grape, Areni, the local grape here. He is working on a white out of, uh, made out of Vosky Hot. Now, I'm going to taste the 12 we opened this last night. The nice cool thing about Areni is you get this, you get this color where it's a little bit translucent. Uh, it's, it's in between a garnet and a purple color. You can see through it. And Areni isn't really big. It has some, I hate to give this cliche, some Pinot Noir-esque flavor profiles. Let's give this a smell. This still smells really, really good. Nice thing with Areni, you get some, you get some strawberry, some smokiness, some grass. Just a touch of wood. He ages all his wines in Caucasian oak here from Armenia. A little bit of cherry, black currant. Let me give this a, a go. The 12 is still really good. Strawberry, sour cherry, like I was saying, earth, mineral, some grass characteristics, a little bit of smokiness. Anything else you remember about the 12? Uh, I think you cover everything, but uh, what's really interesting about small production over here especially when not a ton of technology is involved. It's a very honest wine. And every single bottle has its own characteristic. Yep. It varies a little bit. And when you drink across the bottle, it constantly changes. The profile keeps changing. That's what, if, if you couldn't hear what Shireen's saying, and I agree 100%, sorry for interrupting, is yes, these bottle, these wines are very honest. Every bottle is a little different. There's bottle variation, but not not in a bad way. They change, they evolve around the bottle. Areni, to me, I love the grape. 
it's 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 nice and light. The tannins are silky smooth. It's a wine that you can drink a lot of and not get weighed down by. Very food friendly wine. Very sour. Very tart. Awesome wine. I gotta get. I gotta tip my hat to Armin. He's giving us. He only made 50 bottles of his 2005 Magnum, and we get to take one home. So, really excited about that. Very good wines. Come check them out if you're in Armenia. Very small production. So, if you want to add anything else, Shreen? Mm, no, that's about it. But uh, yeah, if you're coming to Armenia, definitely Old Bridge is one of the wineries that you should definitely check out. One last story about this guy. We finally, one of Armin's best customers is a guy that works in the mining industry here. And the guy came and tasted Armin's wine. And he was so worried that Armin would sell the wine that he bought hundreds of bottles, I think 100 or 200 bottles, kept it in Armin's cellar. And every time he passes through, he just picks up a few bottles. So I thought that was a cool story. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. Check out these wines. More Armenian wines will be featured in our book, Uncorking the Caucasus. I'll put it in the description box below, and I will see you at the next episode.